So, did you ever wonder how to select units in a 3D Godot game? By dragging a box across the screen or clicking on them? You know, like a typical RTS selection system. Cause this is actually pretty easy to do in Godot. Ok, so let's say that you have a scene like this one, with various objects for the environment, and in the middle, some unit characters that you want to select. A good practice can be to first put those units in a specific node group to mark them as selectable. This will help us get the list of possible characters quicker afterwards. Then we should create a new node in our scene that will handle our selection, so it will be our selection manager. This node needs to be a 2D or control derived node, because we'll want to use some custom join tools, and those are only available on these types of nodes. I've actually talked about the basics of those custom join tools here, if you're curious about the details. So in our case, we'll just go for control node, and we'll make sure it is shrunk to the top left corner of the screen, with a size of 0. The point is not to have it hold any visible elements, it's just to use it as manager for additional code-driven GUI visuals, so it doesn't matter what size the element has. Alright, now with that setup, let's start scripting. We'll attach a new script on our new control node, for example one called unit selector, and begin with this code snippet. So in here, we're first focusing on computing and displaying our selection box. As you can see, the idea is pretty simple. In the input function, we check if the player just pressed the left mouse button, which would initiate a selection box. This toggles on our selecting boolean flag, and we also store the current mouse position on the screen as the drag starts position. Then, still in this function, we'll check if the button is released, in which case we'll turn off the selecting variable, and we'll call QRedraw to force a redraw of our selection box display using the draw function. Finally, we'll check if we're currently selecting, meaning the mouse button is down, and if we're moving the mouse. And in that case, we'll update our current selection rectangle, determined by our drag start position and our current mouse position on the screen, and we'll call another redraw. The only tricky thing to remember when computing our 2D rectangle area is that we need to properly get the min and max x and y coordinate to compute the proper rectangle. But other than that, it's pretty quick to get the matching area. And then for the draw function itself, we'll basically check if we're selecting or not, in that case we can abort early, and then we'll draw our updated rectangle zone. Typically, we can show it as a filled, slightly transparent green rectangle, and also add an additional thin opaque border, just to recreate the typical RTS visuals, like the selection box in Warcraft, Starcraft, or other famous examples. So if you run the scene now, you'll see that whenever you click and move your mouse, you'll get this selection box display. And as soon as you release the mouse button, it disappears. Ok, so that's really cool. But now it's time to truly select stuff using this box. For that, let's go back to our script and start by adding these little lines in our input function, to call our new update selected units method. We'll do that whenever we are updating our selection box, or in other words, when we are selecting and we we'll just move our mouse, or we're exiting our selection mode. Also, note that when we release our mouse button and we stop selecting, if we haven't moved our mouse since we started our selection drag, then we'll just reset the select box to a null size, a position at the current mouse point. This way we'll be able to know if the player actually dragged a box on the screen, or if they just clicked. Now in the update selected units method, what we want to do is go through all the units in our selectable units group from before, and if they are inside the current selection box, then we'll select them. Else, we need to deselect them, and this is important because typically we may shrink back our selection box, in which case the units that were previously selected should be deselected again. Ok, so those three functions will be handled by each of our unit instances, that are instances of this unit scene prefab, and so all the functions are in the script that is on the root node of this prefab scene. Now, because our unit obviously lives in the 3D space, that isn't the same referential as our 2D screen space, we need to convert from one to the other, in order to be able to check if our unit is inside our box on the screen. To do this, we'll use our 3D camera to unproject the 3D position of our unit onto the screen, 
and then check this unprojected 2D position against our selection box rectangle thanks to the handy hashpoint built-in method. For the select and deselect function, in this demo I'm simply toggling a select object on or off to show or hide the little green circle around my unit, and I'm also adding or removing the instance to the list of currently selected units. This will be useful when you'll want to actually do something with those selected units, for example, move them around the map. But of course, if you want, you could add a lot more, like sounds or even more VFX, when units are selected or deselected. And so, here we go! If we rerun our demo, you see that now, when we drag our selection box around, we indeed select or deselect our units accordingly, based on their position on screen. And if we click without truly dragging, then we properly reset our selection by deselecting everything. Okay, so this looks really nice, however, right now, our system still has a pretty big flow. We can't actually select a single unit by clicking on it. Basically, since our box has a null size, when we just click in one spot, there is no way Godot can find the unprojected position of our unit inside it. So to sort this, we're going to go the other way around. We'll project the current mouse position from the 2D screen to the 3D world space, and we'll check if this projected position is inside the bounding box of our unit's 3D model. Now, of course, we could technically give a collider to every unit and use a 3D physics body to check for raycasts or a 3D trigger area to check for mouse clicks. Similar to what I showed in a recent tutorial of mine about how to highlight objects in 2D and 3D Godot scenes. But as you probably know, RTS games are typically a kind of game where you can quickly get a good amount of units on screen at the same time, and in that case, doing raycasts on each and every one of them can be a pretty bad idea. So instead, to optimize our system a bit, we'll reduce it all to just a single raycast on our water plane. Okay, so to allow our water plane to be clickable, the first step is to make it a static physical object. So we'll give it a static body 3D child node that itself has a collision shape 3D child with a box shape. This box shape will cover the water plane and it will be very flat to really mimic a plane collider, because yes, Godot doesn't have plane collider shapes. Then, in the inspector of our static body 3D node, we'll put this physics object on its own physics layer the layer number 2. Next, let's go back to our unit selector script. There, we'll add a new function to create a raycast from the screen space and into the 3D world. This, of course, again relies on the built-in projection utilities of our 3D camera, and this snippet is the typical way to convert from a 2D screen position to its 3D equivalent using a raycast, optionally restricting the possible raycast hits to just the objects on a given physics layer. So in our case, we'll want to call this new util method in our update selected units function, passing in the current mouse position and 2 for the physics layer of our water plane's static body. And then we'll pass the result of this raycast check directly to our units to their selection check function. Now in our unit script, we'll just modify our isInsideSelectionBox function a bit as follows. First off, if the selection box has a non-null size, meaning we've actually dragged our mouse across the screen, then we'll keep the same logic as before. Else, we'll want to use our new raycast to try and select just the unit that we're clicking on. So basically, if the raycast did indeed give us a result, which should always be the case since our water plane covers the whole visible chunk of the world, then we'll compare the raycasted 3D click position to the bounding box of our unit. So by accessing the actual mesh instance 3D node inside our unit scene, so the node that displays the 3D mesh, we'll be able to call its getAABB built-in to get the axis aligned bounding box, and then by remultiplying by the global transform of the node, we'll get it in global world coordinates with position, rotation and scale reapplied. Finally, all that's left is to check that this global bounding box contains our 3D projected mouse point, and we'll know if our mouse click indeed matches a unit, with just one raycast required. Of course, in that case, because we've exported our model node, 
don't forget to assign it in the inspector of the roots of the unit prefab scene. And if you try this out, you'll see that you can now properly click on the units in the scene to select just one at a time, or go and mix it with our previous selection box mechanic to get a group of them together. As a really quick bonus, note that we can of course quickly allow players to manually cherry pick units by clicking and holding a key like Shift, for example. To do this, we'll just check for this input in the update selected units method. So here I'm using the key directly, but you could also use an input action if you prefer. And so if the proper input is pressed, then we won't deselect any units, even if they are outside the updated selection box this time. And well, that's it. We've now got a simple RTS-like selection system that handles and displays a box-based group selection, takes care of single clicks using an optimized raycast-based system, and properly registers or unregisters selected units with a basic visual update. Now, of course, the next step would probably be to have those selected units move in the scene when we click somewhere. So if you want to learn how to do that, tell me in the comments and I'll be sure to make a follow-up tutorial on that topic. And if you want to make sure that you don't miss the upcoming videos, then subscribe to this channel. There's already a bunch of other tutorials that you can check out in the meantime. Of course, a huge thanks to my Patreon members for their support, and to you for watching. And as always, take care.